Hey guys, Luke McRoy, we're here at high school camp uh, in Sevierville, Tennessee. We've got a pretty impressive setup here, a uh, total of nine LED screens, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it's all mapped together except for the two side iMags. So I kind of want to talk through a little bit of my workflow, how we've sort of set everything up. Basically using a Mac trash can, it's a D, dual D700 graphics processor, which we found is really the, the key for a lot of this fancy graphics playback. Uh, we're basically coming out of that, there's a lot of wires here so I can sort of simplify this. We're coming out of here in two main outputs. One output is going to a data path, which is right there on the end, black box, it's DVI-N, it's splitting that so that it's a uh, 3840 by 1080, which is two 1920 by, 12, uh, 1920 by 1080s. We're splitting that, that's good, then going into the two decimators on top, and they're running into this fiber run, which is going back to video world. Uh, we're then running a third output, which is this red HDMI, and it's just a normal 1080. That's so that we can get iMac. So basically, if you look at this setup right here, the full setup, the LED wall in the center, all seven of those surfaces, is being processed by two 1920 by 1080 systems. I'll show you once we go on the other side how we're cutting up those graphics. Um, the side is being processed by a separate 1920 by 1080. The reason we did that is, is for this. If we ever wanted to create any sort of high-end effect that we were doing on the center and match that on the sides, or we wanted to play a video that was playing on the center and the sides and we wanted them to be sync and timing, they need to come from the same source. Otherwise, you're gonna see frame delays, you're gonna see different sort of um, technical issues that don't allow them to be played back smoothly. So, on top, that's the basics. That's sort of how we're running this. All the content's being processed through Resolume. Most of the content is coming from uh, TripleWideMedia.com and DXVLoops.com, uh, but we're actually taking four additional, sorry, three additional sources into the server, into the Mac, in order to have a lot more flexibility. So let me kind of walk through this. Right here, you'll see two Blackmagic mini recorders. I think I can tip this. They're kind of taped down, but all they really are are SDI ins to Thunderbolt outs. The Thunderbolt then go into the Mac Pro, and this basically allows me to have two routable sources from the video switcher coming in as an input into the computer. Now what, what can I do with that? Here's exactly what I can do with that. I can create presets now utilizing cameras that are coming from the fly pack, and I can put them on that main LED wall. So I can make them black and white, I can put a mirror effect, I can have them pulse RGB shifts, or any sort of thing. The flexibility is pretty endless. Then the third input, I'm using a Ultra Studio 4K. Now you may be asking, why are you using two mini recorders and one Ultra Studio 4K? It's because that's what we had. So there was no method to the madness. You could have used three Ultra Studio 4Ks if you have $3,000 laying around, or you could use three mini recorders. All you gotta do is have some way to get SDI into Thunderbolt to get into the Mac. So the Ultra Studio 4K, which is the second box right here, it's got SDI coming in as well. But what we're using that source for is our lighting guy over here has a video server built into his console. So when he's programming, he's actually creating video looks that he thinks would look coordinated and, and good for the room compared to lighting. So that they're very in sync and synergy. So I'm actually taking him as an input. So if at any point I actually just wanna to go to whatever he's already programmed, there's many songs we do that, I just put his program on. So that's some of the wiring on the back end. We're also just a couple of little tools we're using. Uh, we're actually doing audio out via HDMI embed so that it hits the record decks first and then that's being split. Another little thing we're doing is this focus right here is another audio interface and we're actually taking SMPTE timecode in. So the, uh, JR, who is our band leader and he's on stage, he is actually sending me out of Ableton uh, a SMPTE timecode feed and I'm getting just that. And so that allows us to do synced with band um, lyrics and opener videos and hits and cuts, so videos that are 100% in sync. And so if he all of a sudden jumps to a different part in the song, Simpty Timecode's gonna follow that. So uh, I'm now gonna take you on the other side and I'll sort of show you the front interface.